All right, well, the time right now is 545 and 51, 52. <laughs> uh, most of us don't need to know the exact right. time <laughs> down to the second. In fact, you probably rarely think of seconds unless you're running a race or timing a newscast. They, they do that. Our producers yes. have to do that. But few of us pay as much attention to mere seconds as a team up in Boulder the home of the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And researchers there have been part of a debate over the second that has led to a decades long hmm. controversy, if you can believe it. So I had to visit them up there to figure out what this is all about. You've probably driven past it in Boulder, maybe noted the time on the clock outside. Meanwhile, inside the Precision Measurement Laboratory. It's every flashing light is a new second in the United States. Boulder is home to a handful of the world's atomic clocks. One of the people keeping the time, Jeff Sherman, a research physicist with a knack for explaining things in ways we can understand. So an atomic clock is a device to try and tease rate information out of the atom count the periodic oscillations of the atom and pile those counts, accumulate them to give a sense of passing time. The most precise way to measure time, in fact, down to a billionth of a second, which apparently is kind of important these days. I think for everyone's daily life, looking up at the stars for an astronomical sense of time is accurate enough. <laughs> Counting 1, 1,000 to 1,000 is accurate enough. However, in the modern era, there are an amazing number of technologies that under the hood depend on precise and accurate and remotely synchronized time. You'd think in the modern world we'd go with the most accurate, but there are some who believe we should preserve the traditional way of keeping time, according to the sun. The problem is solar time is inconsistent. So for almost 50 years here in Boulder, scientists have periodically added an extra second to their atomic clocks, a leap second. And pretty much everyone has been doing this around the world? Correct. The prescription since 1972 is that leap seconds are announced with about six to eight months notice by an official Bureau of Astronomers whose sole job it is to monitor the skies, compare it to the atomic clocks, and decide with about half a year's notice that a leap second should be added to the last second of either July or December. They're rare, only 37 leap seconds since 1972, but problematic. Negligible to us, but you can imagine for computer systems that use digital time signals to stamp the order of operations, or for example, the order in which financial transactions were made, they could get confused by this sudden addition of a second. For years, many in the timekeeping community have pushed to get rid of the leap second. And finally, last month, a governing body voted to do it, starting in the year 2035. Most of us won't notice any difference. Oh, I'm like half a second off. But for Jeff Sherman and his team, it lends credibility to their clocks. In lack of a standard that people like, they will invent their own. And that is the issue we're facing. A number of technology companies that would rather have a continuous time scale have decided to invent alternate implementations of the leap second. There is inherent value in having everyone do the same thing and adhere to the same standards. And